What's going on everybody? My name is Marcus. Welcome back to another video. Today's going to be a day in the life video. On these day in the life videos, what I like to do is I like to answer whatever questions you guys leave me in the comment sections on previous videos or the live streams. Uh, that way I can provide as much value as I possibly can to help you guys grow your reselling business, hopefully to six figures. So uh, you guys can leave your full-time job or even your part-time job and do this full-time. So how's everybody doing today? Hopefully everybody's doing well. Uh, um, got 50 items right here getting ready to take photos for my VA and then that bag right there is my set of listings for the day uh, let's jump into some of these numbers real fast yesterday was a decent day um, as far as you know totals have been lately we got um, yesterday was at $646 let me zoom this in for you guys come on mate zoom in there we go um 646 is what the day finished out at you see right here i kind of got into a slump like we hit 8 886 on thursday friday was 555 or 553 uh saturday was 568 sunday was 388 that's my lowest day in a really long time uh 416 is pretty low 345 tuesday of may 2nd i guess it's not my lowest day so i got these i get these spikes of like high numbers um it's weird and then i get these really really low dips of really low numbers so to see it go up to 646 yesterday was pretty um promising but today so far we're only at 61 dollars and it's 8 18 a.m so hopefully we can turn that around um let me jump into some of these questions real quick okay so we have a question here from tesseract tesseract comics and more um my question is how many listings do you have to list today to start having money coming in currently i have 55 listings but i feel like most of them don't get any views etc thank you sir so this is the thing 55 listings is not it's not a lot of listings at all, like even close to it. Uh, in order to start seeing some type of daily traction, you're gonna need a couple hundred listings minimum. Uh, I know for me, when I started seeing uh, daily sales, I had well over 150 items. Um, and that's still not a lot of listings. You will not have daily sales unless you sell very, very in-demand items or you're accepting offers or you're sending really aggressive offers um, with 55 listings. It's not gonna, it's just not gonna happen yet. Um, I encourage you to be patient and stick with it because 55 listings, while it may seem like it's a lot, it's really not a lot um, in the grand scheme of things. I, I didn't start seeing like 10 sales a day until I had over a thousand listings. So uh, you wanna just be patient and continue to pick up good items and list them correctly to be able to start um, having uh, steady cash. You're not going to replace any income with 55 listings yet, but have hope because you can make some sales. You're just not going to replace a steady stream of income with 55 listings. So just keep, keep listing and you'll see how it pays off. Just trust me. So you guys liking the uh, standing desk? I got this for 10 bucks at the thrift store and my brother works there. He's not the reason why I got it for 10 bucks. My brother looked out for me. I told him I've been looking for a standing desk, one of the electric ones. He found me a standing desk that was not electric. And then, so he hit me up and was like, hey, we got this electric desk up here. He sent me pictures of it and I was like, that's exactly what I want. I get up there, he's gonna charge me like 30 bucks or 20 bucks or something like that, something feasible, you know what I mean? And then the guy at the register just like was like 10 bucks. I'm like, bet. So nice deal on the desk. These things go for like on the low end, $150. Uh, on the high end, upwards of 250 to 350 even on some of them. So super blessed. It's gonna help me out with my posture. This raggedy chair, it's kind of trash. I paid a dollar for it from the same thrift store. Uh, so this definitely helps. I just need a fatigue mat to stand on so that way um, my back doesn't hurt from standing all day. Big old cup of joe replenished. 
now it's time to answer another question um cyril cyril music says hey marcus i was wondering how much per pound is your goodwill bins for clothes in la it's three dollars sheesh that's crazy so um it's not really just per clothes it's per pound of items uh hard goods and clothing are all a dollar 89 per pound which that just went up a few months back and then books are 50 cents an inch and vhs's are five cents an inch so pretty much like five cents of vhs so uh it's a dollar 89 for now so i guess we're gonna have to just see what happens over the next few months or year or so or whatever uh i know that three dollars is pretty freaking high though um still plenty of money to be made uh but damn that's tough man um sorry to hear that um you just kind of got to do what you got to do pick the best items that you can when you're going there and you'll still be extremely profitable so i found that the key to success of at least the model that i use which is the bins is finding things that people pass up on all the time and seem to not know anything about so for me one of the things that people pass up on all the time are bke jeans and i guess it's because they either a don't know about it or they just i don't know are tripping uh silver men's jeans they pass up on these all the time uh what else do they pass up on all the time that i pick up i pick up most um um uh, college wear abercrombie stuff they pass on this these are this is the easy money right here levi's jeans they're always passing on Fabletics, I found a bunch of this stuff all in one bin. Puma, I was sleeping on Puma myself. Um, cool, they're always passing up on these. I got these 15 minutes before the bins closed and they're crispy, nothing wrong with them. Another pair of BKE jeans. Uh, what else are they sleeping on? Tyndale FR pants, not a lot of money, but fire resistance pants sell well. Um, Polo Ralph Lauren button up shirts, they're always passing on that. Wrangler 36 MWZ, they pass on this stuff. Carhartt flannel line jeans, they pass on this stuff. You know what I mean? So, what you got to do is find people, or not find people, but find what people are tripping and passing up that you can sell for pretty good money. I'm not in the bins like only looking for exclusive bangers. I'm not only in there looking for band tees, vintage tees, uh, things like that. Um, Cause if that was all I was looking for, I would leave with just a handful of items each time. Um, and sometimes I'd leave with nothing because it's just a lot of competition for those items in general. So for me to be able to make six figures uh, each year, I sell basic bread and butter clothing that you can find in abundance that doesn't break the bank anybody can afford i can list these jeans for 35 bucks if someone sends me an offer for 25 dollars, i can accept it and still be extremely profitable it's just it works for me so you got to find what works for you my business does not have to fit your business model my profit margins do not have to fit your profit margins that's the beauty of ebay you can do your business the way that you want to do it I can do my business the way that I want to do it as far as the products we choose to sell for the price points we choose to sell them at. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and get these photos taken um, and jump into this. I got a Patreon call in a few minutes, about 30 minutes. So I'm going to try to get as many photos as I can knocked out the box before the call. All right, guys. So another successful morning call in the books. Um, if you guys don't know, Myself and Bo Johnson, we run a Patreon called Road to Six Figures, where our goal is to pretty much help everyone reach six figures in sales a year. Um, if that's not what your goal is, that's fine. You can still join, uh, you know, but we would really like to help people really reach their potential with this uh, with this Patreon. Um, you got access to myself and Bo. Uh, we did over $300,000 in sales last year. We'd really like to show you guys how we did it and maybe help you guys reach that um, level as well. Um, it, there is a free seven day trial if you guys are kind of on the fence about it. You don't know if it's going to be for you. Um, you can join for seven days. Uh, get your store review and at least get some free information out of us. Um, but if you do decide that the value is there, it's only a dollar a day after that to uh, continue to be a member of it. So 
consider it you know if you guys do decide to join we really can't wait to see you guys inside of the discord and uh inside of the patreon as well to you know really help you guys grow your business and reach your full potential uh if not this year maybe next year you know but um that's what we're here for uh if you guys just want accountability just to say i'm going to do my 10 listings a day and i need someone to hold me accountable to make sure i do it we can do that too um so come on over see what it's about hopefully you guys like what you see and you continue to be a member of it one of the questions i got asked was um about square mode and my camera so what i do is i have the item on the board right and as you can see from this camera screen i can see everything off to the side right but when i hold the phone up Sorry about text notifications, but when I hold the phone up in square mode, you can see, dang it man, the Discord is blown up. You can see that all I can see on the phone screen is the jeans. Um, if I put it not in square mode, which square mode is the one-to-one -one ratio, let's just use the full screen. So when I do the full screen, I have to stand back even further but then it gets like the sides, the the bottom uh, of the, the table and the ceiling in the photo as well. So then there's the option for three fourths, uh, which this is the three, this is three fourths. So if I stand a little closer, I can get everything in the photo as well, which this is fine too. Uh, but I've discovered in my listings that the square mode, the one-to-one -one ratio works the absolute best for me. Uh, I just put the item inside of the lines and everything uh, lines up into eBay, into the uh, photo section. Um, everything's centered when I use it that way. So I don't know if that helps anyone. For the longest time I was using full screen and I'd have to crop the items out in the eBay listing tool. Uh, it just made my process a lot longer. Once I narrowed it down to um, using the one-to-one -one ratio, the square mode, uh, it eliminated me having to crop any photos totally. So I said all the time that I don't pick up things that need to be like lint rolled or like fabric shaved to any excessive amount, except when there's exceptions to the rule. So this is a Burberry cashmere sweater. Um, definitely a pickup, right? If you see the front side of this is, it's all fabric shaved, except for like a couple of like loose little hairs or fibers or whatever this is. I'll get it in a little bit better detail, but this is the back side. Now the back side, if you can see, it's got like fibers and stuff on it. I need the lint roll. Uh, this is the only instance where, uh, cause the item does not have any holes or anything like that, uh, that I did pick it up. Um, it was a lot worse when I got it. I did wash it. Normally I don't wash this stuff cause you know, it's real touchy and you gotta like dry clean or you gotta like not dry it and stuff. So I did get it washed um, and I laid it out to air dry. Well, you know, my mom laid it out to air dry cause she's the one I pay to do the laundry. Uh, and so now I'm spending time lint rolling this off just trying to get all this stuff off. And uh, since it's cashmere and wool, obviously the lint roller gets coated really, really quickly. Uh, so it just becomes a chore, but this is an item where I will spend the time that it needs to uh, get this into tip top shape to sell it. Let me just look up some comps real quick on this and show you guys what this can go for. Okay, so since mine is a, it's cotton blend, not wool blend, cotton and cashmere. So since mine is a cotton blend, we got a 74, we got a 43, we got a 58. Uh, 55 pounds, 80 best offer. This is the typical Burberry pattern. I don't have that. All right, sorry guys, that was my insurance agent. Um, so yeah, we got an 80, 55, 58, 43, um, 74. And I could continue to do a little bit more research. See 93, 16 best offer, like why? If this had the Burberry pattern on it, the tartan pattern, it'd be a lot better of a seller. This one sold for 57. Uh, so I'll put the effort that it comes in that uh, that's required to clean this up a tiny bit 
to be able to get some uh, easy money out of it. It's super light, uh, probably probably max I paid a dollar for it. So I'm gonna go ahead and spend a few more minutes. I've, I think I've been rolling it for like three minutes or so, so far. So probably another three minutes on the backside and uh, I'll be able to, it'll be ready to go. All right, guys, I gotta go pack up these orders. So I'm gonna bring you guys along with me to the storage unit and uh, we'll chop it up over there. All right, I got three hats. So it's going out the Navy hat. It's going out for twenty five dollars. The LSU hat is going out for eleven fifty five, and the Armani Exchange hat is going out for thirteen fifty. Now, since I have not been listing hats every day, I had not. I have not been making hat sales every day. Um, in order to get the best results, optimal results for your business, you may want to list in the categories that you sell in every day to get sales in those categories every day it's called tranquility and mayhem men's button-up shirt like a western type of shirt sold for eight bucks and this women's talbot sweater sold for eighteen dollars um long sleeve items sweaters hoodies pullovers are still selling well for me um i've sold probably four hoodies today so far uh so pretty good sellers um southern tide shirt 10626 sold for 1125 10626 got this uh southern tide shirt it's like a um beach type of vibe you know ocean like salt life type brand uh sold for 1125 gotta say montauk state park t-shirt just a basic destination tee sold for 1125 all right we gotta say Chris Stapleton shirt. This sold for ten dollars. We got us a women's Sublime tank top. This is like Sublime the the rock band or ska band or whatever from the nineties. Uh, sold for six bucks. We have some Citizens of Humanity jeans. These sold on a best offer of twenty five dollars. Yes, I know I could have sold them for more. And then we got some bonobos. These pants sold for $18.75. Alrighty, St. Louis blue shirt sold for $7.50. These good threads pants is like an Amazon brand sold for eleven dollars This Columbia shirt sold for ten dollars. This what is this? Gap shorts sold for ten dollars also. This is a Jordan brand hoodie. Sold for a best offer of $18. This is another Columbia like Omni Shield outdoor moisture wicking type shirt. Sold for $13. This Florida Gators Nike hoodie sold for $16 last night while I was on the live stream. Uh, definitely will accept that. Oh, now we got a bunch of older items. This Under Armour shirt sold for three dollars break even old navy shirt sold for 840 a little bit of profit this order right here is a multiple quantity order jm collection shirt and an alfred dunner shirt these shirts sold for 18 dollars together plus shipping this is another multiple quantity order these are Gilligan and oh Gilligan O'Malley like intimate pajama pants sold for seven bucks a piece. All right, American Eagle hoodie sold for fifteen dollars and forty cents. These Indigen shorts sold for twenty dollars. These Nike golf pants sold for forty eight bucks. Uh, they are new with tags. Um, let's see this. Plains Western shirt sold for $13.50. Maurice's top sold for $13.50. And then these Nike shorts sold for $10.80. So that is the sales. I actually sold a Ralph Lauren Denim and Supply t-shirt that I left at home uh, for $13.50 as well. All right, guys, here's the bag of orders. You ready to go take these to the post office? All right, guys, so I just come from dropping my items off at this post office. 
This is a contractor post office, which means it's a gas station that has a contract to accept packages for the post office. I come here because, number one, it's a staff full of women that don't hate their lives or hate their jobs or have not been um, disgruntled employees of the USPS for decades. Uh, they don't give me any problems about scanning all my packages in. They've never given me grief about the thickness of a flat rate envelope or none of that crap that people tell me about their uh, post office doing to them. So since they treat me well here and they're always smiling, they're always happy, uh, I just continue to come here, man. They've been taking my packages from day one, from one package a day up to a hundred in a Monday. Uh, so, you know, I'm gonna just keep coming here. Uh, they never frown or never get uh, upset when I walk through the door. So I keep coming here because it kind of feels like uh, co-workers, staff members, home away from home type of thing. You know what I mean? So yeah, that's my piece. All right, guys, uh, back at the house. I got uh, a comment from Andrew Krakowski says hello Marcus I've been watching a lot of your videos and love what you're doing have you ever went have you ever went over what your end goal is I'm a full-time seller as well but it seems like a prison sentence then he put in parentheses I know you've been open before about how you've been in jail and probably wouldn't compare it to that but I'll use that for the lack of a better phrase it seems that you and I are grinding every day, but there's no vacation time or can't even go on a mini vacation without hurting metrics. I know you can use the drafts for those, but even putting my store on vacation mode for a couple of days hurts sales a lot. I think for me, my goal is to stack a bunch of cash for real estate rentals eventually. I think starting off in a duplex or house hacking, as they say, then hopefully repeating that process. I was just curious what your thoughts and goals were. Thanks. Keep up the grind. So for me, <clears throat> so for me, I have gone over this before. Um, as times have gone on, my goals have slightly changed just a tiny bit. I do still want to get into real estate. I do still want to continue doing eBay as well as I grow. Uh, probably not going to increase the listing goal for some time now. 50 is doing pretty good. Um, as the store continues to net items, the sales amount will increase. The daily sales will increase. The goal is to get the 50 by the end of the year. I'll probably ride that out for a little while and see how the sales go, how um, the money is, as well as how the sourcing go immediate future goals um are to continue coaching that right there rewards me a lot with um not financially i mean like um it gives me worth uh, rewards me with value um from helping people grow their businesses watching their stores go from where they're at when they join the patreon to where they get to um that right there is very rewarding um <clears throat> as far as vacations you know extending handling time can help with the metrics uh not slowing down when you turn your store in vacation mode that tells ebay that you're just not there when you extend handling time it tells ebay that you're still there it's just taking you a little bit longer to ship your items so while you'll still get traffic and uh views while you're on vacation mode it's going to do you substantially better to just extend your handling time, still launch listings or schedule the listings out for your vacation. Maybe hire a shipper even just for temporary times while you go out on vacation. Have a family member ship your items for you if they know how to do it. Um, these are just little small hacks that you can do, implement to try to keep things moving in your store to not have to, you know, lose the traction you have going. But for me, you know, the, the big thing in, in the end is to continue teaching people how to do eBay. Uh, I really want to teach um, people that are, you know, from my walk of uh, my past, the walk that I've been on, uh, felons, people coming from prisons, uh, not knowing what they're going to do for a living. Um, you can work eBay. You can start this stuff from the ground up. You don't need any money. Um, and I just really want to show people how to do that. Help change lives. Uh, and give people some positive stuff to look forward to <clears throat> um i do still want to do real estate real estate is definitely going to be something i invest in i'm looking for more passive sources of income though um real estate requires me to have large upfront investments uh property management um 
You know, if something breaks, I got to fix it. I'm not a handyman at all. I don't know how to fix nothing. Um, so uh, those are going to be investments that are going to be more capital intensive versus um, me cranking out more YouTube content. It's, it's free versus the time that I spend um, me doing this Amazon affiliate um, influencer marketing. It's free um, and it pays decent. So um, I can make a few thousand dollars a month doing that, depending on the amount of effort that I put into it on a daily basis. So these things right there are low cost, no cost. I don't have to invest any money into it and I could still make quite a substantial amount of money uh, in the immediate future. The real estate and things like that is going to be for the, the future and like five years into the future, maybe, you know, three years into the future. We'll just have to see how it goes. So hopefully that wasn't too much of a ramble for you. Really appreciate all you guys' questions. Appreciate the support. If you guys are new here, my name is Marcus. Please continue or please consider hitting the subscribe button. Hit the thumbs up. That's going to do it for this one. Catch you guys on the next one. But until then, let's make this cash, guys. Peace.